Right then, if you are aged 16 and under, could you put your hands up? 16 and under? Marvellous. If you are 80 and under, could you put your hands up? Oh, yeah, okay, right, okay, good. You need to use your hands, okay, for this next part, okay? So I'll ask you a question. I'm not going to ask you to shout out the answer. Just raise your hand, either yes or no, okay? So, there's a series of questions, but it relates to a story uh, from a few years ago when I was on holiday up um, in Scotland. Now, I like climbing mountains. That's what I like doing. Some people like beaches. I like climbing mountains. Um, and we were up in Scotland for a family holiday, and there were some mountains that I've been looking at, thinking, I really want to climb that one. I'd read a book about someone who used to live near there, and I thought, I really need to see the view from there. And just, I was given, kindly, a day to go by myself. Kate looked after the rabble over the day, and I had a day to go off, and I was, thinking, I was looking forward to it. The night before, I was really looking forward to it. It's going to be amazing. The views from the top, oh, beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Blue sky is going to be wonderful. Anyway, that morning, I wake up, I draw back the curtains, and what do I see? Grey. Not rain. There was no rain, but grey. Just the mist and the cloud was down. Well, that puts a damper on things, doesn't it? Should I... Should I leave it for another day? What do you think? Should I leave it for another day? Put your hands up if you think yes. Leave it for another day. Keep going. It's misty. I'm not going to see anything from the top. What do you reckon? Keep going. Well, yes, right. Well, I'm going to go with the minority here. I'm going to keep going. I kept going. So, had breakfast, packed my bag. <sighs> it's a bit disappointing, to be honest. I'll keep going. Drove up the roads, got to the car park where I was going to start. Got out of the car. I opened the boot, sat in the boot, started to put my boots on. I realised that there was a camper van next to me. And I'd met these people a day previously somewhere else. And they were in their camper van. There were no doors open. No, what's going on? What's that? And then I looked up. Now, if you've ever been to Scotland, you might have encountered something called the Scottish Midge. The Scottish Midge is a little tiny fly. And it is vicious, <laughs> it is good to me anyway. It likes certain people, and some people it likes to nibble on. And I'm one of those people. I can be stood right next to Kate, my wife, and they will not bother her a bit, because they'll all be on me. Ah, looks up, and there's just this cloud of midges, and being misty, cloudy weather, it was midge weather. I dived back into the car, closed the doors, and try to keep the midges out. Should I give up? Who thinks I should give up? Who thinks I should keep going? You think I should give up at the back? Who thinks I should keep going? This is not going well, is it? Keep going. Well, I kept going. I begin one day to do this. I kept going. Started walking. The midges are following me. I've forgotten my midge net, which is, makes you look ridiculous, but stick it over your head and keeps the midges off. But I've forgotten it. Midges, right, start walking up through the forest, out into the, out into the hills. This is not going so well so far. I get to a river. I've got to cross the river. There is a bridge to cross the river. However, this bridge is, a, is two ropes. One rope for your feet and one rope for your hands. So you have to shuffle along like this. This is not turning out very well. Do I, should I turn back now? What do you reckon? Hands at the back? Turn back or keep going? Keep going. Okay. Well, it's a good thing I kept going because actually the river, because it's summer, the river wasn't that high. So actually, stepping stones across, it was fine. Right. We're now getting into the steep stuff. The steep stuff. We're going up, still in the cloud. And then it starts to break a little. Oh, I can see a bit more. Okay, looking positive. But then it gets really steep. So much so that I pass a couple of people who are out walking for multiple days with their dog. And they've got their dog. Looks like, 
in a harness, almost like a, with a briefcase handle, and they're hoisting the dog up. Even the border collie has given up, okay? So there I am, it's starting to get, using my hands. It has, I'm, pardon this, I'm sweating bucket loads. <laughs> but at this point, do I keep going? Yes, no, keep, no, turn back, turn back the people. I kept going. And the view at the top, we'd come above the cloud, the cloud was below, and the view from the top was amazing. Was it worth it in the end? I think so, I think so. But it was hard going up. There was all sorts of obstacles, and it was hard going up. Becoming a Christian is a wonderful thing. It's the best thing you can ever do. To be right with God is the best thing you can ever do. And there is heaven ahead. And there is wonderful things in God's presence ahead. But living as a Christian can be hard at times. There are troubles. People at school might not understand. It can be difficult to live as a Christian in the school playground. It can be difficult because... I, as a Christian, I still sin, I still fail. Jesus said to his disciples, in this world, you will have tribulation, you'll have trouble. You will have trouble. It's a wonderful thing to be a Christian, but it can be so, so hard at times. And like me, going up that mountain, there's all sorts of obstacles. Do I turn back? Oh, I can't see anything. But the end result was worth it. Jesus didn't stop by saying, you will have trouble. He said, take heart, I've overcome the world. You might find it hard to live as a Christian at school, at home. Or you might think, oh, I can't just keep failing. Take heart. Death is defeated. Satan is defeated. Keep going. Keep trusting him. If you are his, if you're trusted in him, he will bring you through to the end. He will walk with you. He will take you. He will carry you. Keep going. Because the view at the top, to be in God's presence, will make everything else just pale into significance. So, there you go. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Let's just pray for a moment. Lord, we thank you for how you have overcome the world. We thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for our sins, taking the punishment meant for us. Lord, we thank you that you did that because you love us. Lord, we thank you that you did that, taking that punishment meant for us, that we, we can be right with God again. And Lord, we thank you that you have overcome death. You have overcome sin. You have overcome the world. It's not down to us to do that. You have done that. And Lord, we thank you that if we have trusted in you, we are safe in your hands now and for eternity. Lord, we pray, help us to live in that every day. Lord, we pray for any who haven't trusted in you. May they do so soon. Lord, we pray, please. Amen. Let's sing again uh, our second hymn. Uh, which is before the throne of God above.
We're going to read uh, Psalm 103. And uh, in my Bible, it's got the title, Praise for the Lord's Mercies. Um, and the, the Bible you've got here, the ESV, says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. So we're going uh, to read it all, and then we're going to think on it in a few moments. So, Psalm 103, and starting at verse 1, this is a psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, with good so that your youth is renewed like, like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He do, does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. To those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let's sing again. Uh, praise my soul, the King of heaven.
Let's pray for a moment. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, the children that are here today. And Lord, we pray for them. Lord, um, may they learn wonderful things about you now um, in, their, in their classes. Lord, may they learn life-changing things about you. Lord, may, although at a young age, may they learn things that are foundations for them, knowing that you are the foundation to build their lives upon, we pray. Help those who are teaching, give them your wisdom and your words, Lord, we pray. Um, and may those children grow up into men and women who love you dearly and, and have you as number one in their hearts and minds, Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray for ourselves as we come to your word now. Speak to us. Help us to fix our eyes upon you. Lord, help us to understand what we're reading. Lord, help us to be open to you and what you want to say to each of us this morning. Lord, may we um, not pull down the shutters on you this morning. May we come to you humbly and seek to know you more, seek to know you better. And Lord, may we be changed through, through that, Lord, more into your likeness. Lord, you know how far short we fall of you and your standard, daily, hourly. But Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness. Lord, we thank you for what Jesus did on the cross. We thank you for your rescue plan for us and thank you that it was perfect. It was once for all time. And that we, despite our sin, can be brought back into relationship with you as you intended it to be. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, help us to place you as number one in our lives. Lord, may we build our lives upon you. May other things not creep in and distract us and push us sideways. Lord, may you be everything to us. So often that isn't the case. Forgive us for that, Lord. <coughs> but Lord, may we prize you above anything else, everything else, Lord, I pray, please. Help us now as we look at this passage. May it do us good, Lord, we pray. Amen. If you've got Psalm 103 open in front of you, um, that's where we'll be spending our time. Um, I don't know, when you get to the end of a day, or a holiday, or a week, working week, what are you like at remembering the good things that happened? What are you like at remembering, oh, that, that, was, that was a good moment in the day. That was a good moment in the holiday. That was, despite it being a hard work, week at work, actually, that was, that was really good. What are you like at remembering that? I know I am so quick to forget the good stuff and the difficulties or the weariness or actually the thoughts of next week actually start to crowd in and thoughts of, oh, that was really good. That was a good moment with the children. That was a happy time at church. That was something that actually we managed to do really well at work and actually, despite the odds, actually went really well and be thankful for it. What are we like? What are you like 
um, are being thankful. What am I like? I know what, I, I know what I'm like. I forget so quickly. And I forget so quickly what God is like as well and how good he's been to me. I forget very easily the mercy he's shown to me. I forget very easily, day by day, the prayers he answers. And I forget to be thankful for that. This psalm here, Psalm 103, this is David, King David, and it's a psalm where he's urging himself and us, the reader, to praise God, to bless God. It says that in verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Why? Well, we find that in verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not, remember what God is like. Remember what God is like, what he has done for you, his, all his characteristics, his mercy, his goodness, how he doesn't change. And let that lead you to praise him and worship him. The purpose of um, mankind is summed up in the Westminster Catechism like this. The chief end of man, our purpose, is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. To praise him, to bless him, and then to enjoy, enjoy him. To remember all his benefits. To remember what he's like. And that sort of echoes these first two verses here. David urging himself, us, praise God. Remember how good he is and what he has done for us. And notice, he says it twice, oh my soul. This isn't praise of mechanical praise, just lip service. This is from the heart. This is something that's from the heart, not just I'll do it because it's the right thing to do. I'll do it because I'm at church on Sunday. Actually, I'm going to remember what he's done for me, what I've been saved from, and that should, I hope, draw us to worship him from the heart. That's what David wants, it to be praise from the heart. What we're going to do this morning, we're going to work through uh, the psalm, but we're going to use the framework of Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven that we just sung, because that hymn is based off of Psalm 103. And we're going to look at each verse of the hymn, and then... Um, Find those verses in Psalm 103 and think on those things. So, verse 1, I won't sing it to you. I'm, I'm trying to think, I've, have I ever been, I've never been asked to do a solo, and I'm not going to start now, so don't worry. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like me his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting king. Line three of that verse, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Four words, but they are huge if you're a Christian. They are huge of what you've been saved from and what has been restored. Verses 3 and 4, um, you see, who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? It's similar sort of language to, I think it's Job 38, where God is questioning Job. I just, hang on, who's done this for you? Who's done that for you? The answer is all God. He's the one. God is the one who forgives all our iniquity, all our sin. Who's the one who heals our diseases? God is able to heal us from illness. He doesn't always, but he's able to. But he has dealt with our biggest disease, our sin problem. The sin of the heart, the disease of the heart. And that is fixed because of Christ. Who redeems your life from the pit? 
Our sin breaks that relationship with God, that perfect relationship that was in the Garden of Eden. Adam's sin and our sin breaks that, has broken that. But he has redeemed us. Um, at our home group back in Clifton at the moment, we're going through the book of Ruth. Um, it's, it's a great book. And you've got Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, who redeems Ruth. That relationship restored. He redeems us because Jesus took the punishment meant for us. The price for my sin and your sin has been paid by Jesus dying on the cross. And we are forgiven. I still sin, but I am forgiven. Jesus died once on the cross for my sin, for yours, and that price has been paid completely. And one day I'll be perfect in heaven, and I can't wait for that day. Because <laughs> your sin just gets, wears you down, doesn't it? You think, why is it I cannot beat that thing? Why is it I always fail in that area? And it just wears you down in the end. But one day, we'll be, if you are his, you'll be perfect in heaven, in his presence, restored, healed, forgiven. In some ways, I wonder whether that hymn could have stopped at verse 1. Because those four words, that's huge. That's the biggest thing. Just to be right with God is huge. Let's move on. Verse 2 of the hymn says this. Praise him for his grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise him still the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Praise him, praise him, glorious in his faithfulness. God is faithful. He doesn't change. He's, once he's promised something, he sticks with it. You can rely on that 100%. But he is also merciful and gracious. If we look at um, verse 8, yeah, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve, and grace is when he gives us what we don't deserve. We deserve separation from him, death. But he doesn't give us that because of Christ. But he doesn't just stop there. And then grace is when he gives us what we don't deserve. And he's so, so good to us. He is slow to anger. He is abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, it said in verse 10, nor repay us according to our iniquities. He's removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. It says in verse 12, forgiven. He is merciful to us, but then gracious. Gives us what we don't deserve. Have you ever written down a list of God's blessings to you? Ever tried doing that? Initially, when you sit down to do that, you might struggle. But take time. Take a cup of tea and a biscuit. Sit down and write down God's blessings to you. The small things, the big. And as you think on it, as you pray on it, you will see how gracious he is to each of us. Sins forgiven. A roof over our heads. A Bible to read. Food to eat. Family around us. The list goes on. Try that this afternoon. There's an old, well, I think it's old hymn, I presume it's an old hymn, um, old song, count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what God has done. That's maybe sometimes we have to think on, what have I prayed about over the past week? What have I asked God for? What have, where have I needed his help? And then think on, that's how we answer prayer. That's a blessing. That's God's grace to us when he answers our prayers. I don't do it currently, but at one point I kept a little notebook where I'd write down prayers and then write down when God answered them and how he answered them. And the idea was to remind myself, to remember how good he is. You see the prayer? 
That's how he answered it, and he does answer. Maybe something worth doing. But God, he is merciful, he is gracious, and he is steadfast as well, isn't he? He is steadfast, and he, despite our waywardness, even once saved, our Christian life can go up and down, can't it? There are times when we are walking in with him, there are times when we're going off and doing our own thing. But he's always merciful, always welcomes us back. That is what he is like. He is faithful to us. Verse 3. Father-like, he tends and spares us. Well, our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Praise him, praise him, widely as his mercy flows. Verses 13 and 14 of, of 103, we see, As a father has compassion on his, to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. When you think of God what, what, and your relationship with God or who God is, do you see him as a father to you? Do you see him as that? This is God who spoke the universe into existence, who sustains all things, who knows all things from the beginning to end, who was there He's eternal. He's outside of time. He's, by comparison, we are not even dots in the universe, are we? By comparison, no matter how uh, big we like to think of ourselves at times, actually, by comparison to God and the, well, the universe, let alone God, we are mere specks in the universe. And yet, he's not distant. He's not far off. He's not a tyrant. He's not a head teacher of a school that you fear to go and see. If you are his, he's like a father to you. You can go to him about anything and he cares for you and looks after you. It says there, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. He knows how frail we are. He knows everything about us. We can't hide anything from him. He knows how frail we are. And so he deals with us lovingly. <coughs> he cares for us because he loves us. He disciplines us because he loves us. And if you are his, if you are walking with him, he, is, he works all things for good. It can be hard. It can be tough. We were thinking about that earlier with um, climbing up a mountain. It can be hard going. Some of that maybe is of our own making, our own sin. But God can work through that and he also works through difficulty for our good. He's like a father to us. If you're a dad here um, of young children, there's no better example than for us to model how we interact with our children than how God deals with us. If you think on how gentle and compassionate God has dealt with, well, I'm going to point the finger at me, me over the years, despite my waywardness, do I show the same patience and compassion to my children when they do the same thing again and again? I've told them multiple times. <laughs> you get where I'm going with this. There's a brilliant, God's example, model yourself on him as a father. Verse 4. Frail as summer's flower we flourish, blows the wind and it is gone. But while mortals rise and perish, God endures unchanging on. Praise him, praise him, praise the high eternal one. Before we look at that, just as we look at these, very, these verses, I hope it's drawing you to think on what he's done for you, how good he is to you, and then lead you to worship him and bless him. 
But verse 4, perhaps we see a bit of focus turned around briefly. So it's not looking at God for a moment. It's now looking at actually us. And um, verse 15, as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. We were just thinking about how God is almighty, spoke the universe into existence, and we're like dots, if that. We like to think of ourselves maybe sometimes as quite important dots in the universe. And some people on this planet like to be in charge and think, whether it be in business, in charge of governments, whatever it might be, think we're the ones in charge. But we're frail. We're not here for long. He uses the picture there of a flower in the field. It looks wonderful, but it doesn't last long. If you've ever seen, had poppies in your garden or seen them in the field, they look lovely. But it only takes one little puff of breeze or a few raindrops and the petals have gone from that poppy. They don't last long at all whatsoever. And it's the same with us. We're not here for long on this earth. But there is eternity ahead. And it's either eternity in God's presence or eternity separated from him. Are you right with him? That's the most important thing for you to think on today. Are you right with him? Have you trusted in him? But while we are frail, while we are not here for long on this planet and our strength by him is nothing, God endures. Whatever the current thinking of society in the West, whatever current thinking of society in the East, whatever the latest way to live is, God doesn't change. Verse 17, but the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. To those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. There might be various people on this planet who think they rule over all or would like to rule over all or are aiming for that. God rules over all. And as David looks at him, King David looks at God and thinks on himself. He is a king, but he's a sinner, forgiven sinner. It draws him to worship God because he is unchanging. David knows he's a sinner. He messes up. He is frail, feeble, but God is almighty and unchanging. You can trust him. You can rely on him. He won't let you down. Put your life in his hands and he will not let you down. We may let him down lots, but he will never let us down. Last verse. Angels help us to adore him. Ye behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him dwellers all in time and space praise him praise him praise with us the god of grace david is drawing this psalm to a close now and he's urged himself to praise god he's urged us the reader to praise god and now his request is to the heavenly beings praise god to creation god's creation Praise God. When you, uh, if you watch planet Earth or programs like that or enjoy being outside in God's creation, I hope it draws you to worship him. Don't, please don't worship creation. It's wonderful. It's amazing. But don't, don't worship creation. It's to point to God. And as you see creation, the wonder of it, Use it to help you worship him. 
But David here is urging everything. Praise God. Why is that? Well, we've seen that already in the psalm. He is good. He is unchanging. He is almighty. He is merciful. He is gracious. He redeems us. He forgives us. He heals us. Praise him. So, back to my question at the beginning. How good are you at remembering the positives of things or being thankful? Do you find it easy to remember and to think on and be thankful for what God did for you today? What he's done for you in saving you? Do you find that easy? Do you find it hard? I, I'm shocking. <laughs> when you pray to him in the mornings, when you pray to God in the mornings, what's, what's contained in your prayers? Is it, please, 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 please. Our prayer life can so often be that, can't it? Please, would you help with this? Please, please. And it's good to come into him and do that. Where's the thankfulness in our prayers? Do we come to him first and say, thank you for the cross. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for the food on the table now. Could I encourage you, if you're not already doing that, when you pray, spend time in thankfulness first. Remember all his benefits, because when we thank him actually it reminds us how good he is and that helps us encourages us to then trust him going forwards but also as we're thankful that helps us to praise him as well do you find it difficult to pray in the mornings do you find it difficult or well, whenever you pray do you find it difficult do you find sometimes the words just don't want to come and you go i need to pray i need to pray to god but I have mornings like that where um, I walk the dog each morning and I pray as I walk the dog. There's some mornings, either through tiredness or the worries of the day ahead or just, and the, the words don't want to come. Someone um, I, I know, this is what he does. If he's struggling to pray, he sings a hymn. He sings a hymn to get him started because when he's singing, it lifts his eyes, warms his heart is his aim. As he sings, it warms his heart to look on God and he does that until he feels able to pray. That's quite something, isn't it? Now, if your memory is like mine, trying to sing a hymn without the words in front of you means I get the words all muddled up that doesn't matter because it's the heart what's going on in the heart doesn't matter if you get verse 3 and verse 4 modeled up doesn't matter if you try it doesn't well try it in the car as you're driving to work try it in the shower try it don't worry about who's in the house if you're struggling to pray sing the children's talk earlier you know, the mist was down and sort of pictured that as the Christian life. And heading towards being in God's presence. But also you could apply that to actually some days the mist is down and the worries of life are just surrounding you and you... It's just enveloping. It's times like that when we need to praise God to sing even if we don't feel like it sing to him because when we do that that lifts our eyes from our the troubles around us lifts us clear of the mist and lifts us to look on him on the well the peaks of the mountains let's say and to gaze upon him there's no better thing than that as we do that as we sing that lifts our eyes to him David here is urging us, praise God and remember all his benefits. 
So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to sing our last hymn, Bless the Lord, O My Soul. Let's stand together and worship. There's a challenge for you this afternoon. See how many reasons you can jot down on a piece of paper, see if you can get to 10,000, okay, of how good God is and reasons to praise him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for how good you are. Lord, we thank you that that um, gift of eternal life that is available to all, that that price has been paid in full. Lord, we thank you for how you care for us as a father, 
day by day, despite our waywardness. Lord, thank you for just your daily mercy and grace on us. Lord, we pray as we um, finish now. Lord, help us as we head into the next week, whatever it might be throwing at us, whether it be a happy week or a hard week. Lord, I pray, may we lift our eyes and think on you and give thanks to you for what you've done for us and what you daily do for us. And Lord, may that help us to walk forward with you, trusting you, your ways, your plan, Lord, I ask. Amen.